Shout out our sponsors, GW Competitions. They run regular draws for you to win different prizes from cash to Rolexes to cars and all sorts. It's all legit and the draw is run through the Google number generator. And the prize is delivered the next day and if it's cash, it's transferred the same day. The draws are run on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And you've got to be in it to win it. Ayo, we made this. MO7 did it again. Again, Big Vigo Media Entertainment with another interview. Today, we've got someone that you guys may not know. We tried to do something a little bit different. And basically, this, this one is for the youth, so you guys can see the possibilities that are out there for you. We've got a young man today. His name is AJ. AJ, how are you doing today? I'm good, bro. I'm good, bro. Not too how bad. How's your journey? <laughs> Long still traffic, but yeah, man. All blessed, all blessed. I'm going to take the headphones off quickly because... Obviously, you ain't got headphones on the YouTube one. You ain't got headphones on the YouTube one. But yeah, so um, where have you come from today? Uh, I had a meeting in Islington. Um, so yeah, I came from Islington, that archway side. So. Okay, where are you originally from? Um, I grew up in South. What, what country? I'm from a lot of countries. It's long to this book. Um, no, no, it's, it's, it's good to know you. Where are you from, man? <laughs> I'm from um, Trinidad, Guyana, St. Lucia. Um, I've got a bit of Egyptian in me, like I'm from a load of places. Seasoned. Um, yeah, seasoned, seasoned still. Um, <laughs> but area, no, I grew up in South East um, and North, so it was kind of like back and forth. Yeah. Um, but majority of my life experiences have come from South East. Okay. However, well, I, I, South I, I went to school in the North though. Um, Kennington, Kennington, so near Oval and okay. stuff like that, yeah. Okay, so you got a very interesting story. So I met you, well, I didn't meet you. I first yeah, spoke club, to yeah. you, was in a clubhouse. Yeah. Um, and you were talking about what you do. And I was very intrigued on that. I wish more young people can actually go um, and sort of listen to him and have that same sort of ambition. But let's start from before we even get to what you actually do and how you got there. Is that, uh, what's your background uh, in terms of like family? Did you go up with your mum and your dad? And how was your Yeah, family? no. Um, so I grew up with my mum. My dad was in and out of prison from like a young age. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was me, my mum, my younger brother, and my older brother. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my older brother is currently in prison now. So okay. yeah. How old is he? He's twenty two now. Twenty two. Yeah. So you 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 immediately after him. Yeah, I was uh, I was after my um, older brother, and then obviously my younger brother is now twelve, thirteen, year eight or something like that. So, so what was you into as a young person? Like, what you like? Um, <laughs> I used to probably like majority of youths. Like, I used to play football and stuff like that. Any um, good? Yeah, I was at QPR and Fulham for a bit. Um, okay, wow, what, that, yeah, that, that status. Yeah, that's all I used to really do. That's the kind of the only thing I was really, or the only thing I knew I was kind of good at. Yeah. Um, that school's never really been for me. So. Which um, was your academic? It wasn't great academically. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't stupid or anything, but it's, I never had an interest for it, so I never really used to try. Um, yeah. Do you understand? So yeah. So with, with football, like, why did you stop? Did you get released and then that? Yeah, I got, so, yeah, so I tore my ACL, yeah. um, then got released from QPR, and then since then I've just kind of lost motivation for the sport. Obviously, I've started getting into business and, like, I've just developed new loves. I still play here and there as a hobby, though, but... Well, you might as well come and join our Hackney Sunday team <laughs> on the first team. Like, like, why are you coming and for our first team, Mr. Bit, bit of, <laughs> or is it too much right now? Yeah, it's a bit... Do you know what? I ain't played football in a good, like... I say like properly like in a good couple like a year and a year and a half so yeah. well I want to invite you to one of our matches to play when we've got, we've got a game coming up soon yeah, so feel bro. free come down and play so like growing up in Kenton and that's, that's a very that's a tough neighbourhood tough area yeah it's somewhere I, I'm, I'm, I know pretty well because I'm from um, South East I'm from Peckham it's not too far I sort of know the issues that go around that area how have you managed to keep yourself out of trouble at the time of anything that goes on like you say for example your brother's in a guy to jail and you're sort of kind of doing different things. Do you know what? Yeah, when I was when I was younger, I say from like the age of, it kind of hit me when I was around 15, and it mm. um, obviously a situation happened that kind of made me pattern up a bit. Yeah. Um, 
my best friend passed away in July of 2018, innit? Yeah. Or a close friend of mine from South East, he passed away in July 2018. Um, obviously, he got stabbed and whatnot. And since then, I kind of... I was quite depressed and whatnot. I had to switch to my, my mentality and just pattern up because I was never involved in a gang or nothing because like, I, I feel like I was never susceptible to peer pressure. Like, I was around a lot of that stuff and whatnot, but um, it weren't really for me, man. Like, I never really used to try to get involved in it. Obviously, by affiliation, stuff can happen and whatnot. Yeah. Um, probably done some things I shouldn't have done, but ultimately, I was never really involved like that. But then once that happened, once that situation happened, I kind of woke up to myself. Um, and then, yeah, going into year 11, I was quite an angry kid and whatnot. Ended up yeah. getting excluded from school, so... Okay, uh, yeah. well, uh, so did you finish your season at all? Um, so I got excluded in January of year 11, so around like five months before GCSEs. I ended up doing my GCSEs. Um, I passed and all of that, but I didn't really revise. Like, I was, uh, yeah, it was a tough time at, the, mm -hmm. at that time. And, yeah. What college was? Did you end up at college? Um, I was going to college for a bit, but I don't, I, I know I stopped going, so... Obviously, at them times, my business started doing well, so I didn't really see the point in just, you know, wasting time, so. I mean, I know you probably wanted to be a footballer, but is there anything else that you wanted to be that say, no, I want to be this? It's, mm, nah, it was just really football, to be honest. I've always had a love for business, though. Like, even I know a lot of people say it, but when I was younger, I used to sell cookies and stuff in school yeah. and, like, sweets. Like, I used to, in primary school, I used to fix people's, like, um, you know them Beyblades? Yeah. Remember Beyblades? Yeah. I used to fix people's Beyblades for money. Like, I've always had that, but I just never knew really how to... That ch ch yeah, that channel. Do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how is it that you came across... I mean, tell us what you do first. Tell us what you do. Yeah, so, um, I do Amazon FBA, and I partially own um, a legal cannabis and CBD distribution company um, that's based in the US and Canada that, that sources products from Jamaica and stuff. And then I do a bit of crypto on the side as well. Okay, first and foremost, what is FBA? I yeah, no idea <laughs> yeah a lot of people ask that. So basically, pretty much what Amazon FBA is, um, it stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, right? Yeah. So you would buy products in bulk from a wholesaler, let's say. You would order it to your house or wherever the address is, um, label it up. You'd print it off from the Amazon system on your computer. Um, UPS would then come and collect it from your house and then deliver it to Amazon Fulfillment Center. And then Amazon would kind of distribute it out to whoever's buying the product. Um, that's kind of how Amazon actually operates. Like a lot of the products on Amazon aren't actually Amazon selling them; it's other people selling them on the store. Do you get what I mean? So, okay, I mean, that, that, that's amazing, right? And it sounds very simplistic. And it is, I guess I can it is, look at it as if people on the roads. Let me try to make it relate to people. It's like someone gonna buy a box of food mm -hmm. on the road. And then having wholesale and then people just coming and picking up. So you kind of use that road mentality and road mentality. It's not the road mentality, it's a business mindset. And so you know what I'm going to do is, how did you get into it? Like? Yeah, so like, it's ironic you say that, and obviously my brothers, my uncles, my dad, they were all involved in that type of stuff, innit? So I was never involved in it, like I've never sold drugs or nothing, but just from me watching it, I picked up certain, a lot of business acumen from watching those sort of stuff. As I say all the time, that. Like, these trappers on road and that, like, they would be dangerous businessmen if they could channel it into a legit, into a legit way. But um, the way I got into it, um, so obviously I got excluded from school. I was at home. Um, I didn't really want to go to another school on a managed move either. Um, so I was just at home. I was depressed. Like, I was weak in sitting at home and I just thought, yeah, you know what, like, this ain't going to run in it. Like, I started reading books. I started reading a lot of books. Um, it kind of switched my mindset. A bit um, to be more like hardworking, more entrepreneurial. From there, then I was watching, started watching motivational speeches on YouTube. Now I was watching a Jeff Bezos interview, mm. and he was saying how 80% of Amazon's products basically are not sold by Amazon. Yeah. And that kind of flicked a switch in my brain. It in, like, I wanted to know more. I looked into it, and then from there, yeah, the rest is kind of history. That's how I got into Amazon. So, so what was the first sort of thing you went to go and buy in bulk? So the first thing I did was, um, these times, summer 2018, my uncle just came out of being in it and um, he started to get quite successful in business after he came out. So I, I tried to set up, I tried to do dropshipping prior to Amazon FBA. I set up like a load of stores, like about five stores and they all failed. Mm. Um, so I kind of pivoted to Amazon FBA. I showed my uncle the plan. He liked it, whatnot. Um, I asked for an investment of £1,500. He gave it to me, said I want to return within a month or so, two yeah, months. Pressure. Yeah, pressure. Um, 
And then, yeah, I literally went out. I think the first product I bought, if I remember correctly, I bought these USB, um, you know, like a, char a USB yeah. charger thingy magic. Um, but I completely didn't know what I was doing. Like, I was just buying random stuff in. It's not just a case of buying something random. Like, you have to kind of analyze charts and stuff to work out what will sell and how much it sells per yeah. day and the monthly sales and stuff like that. Do you understand? So, um, yeah. It's more, it's, it sounds simple, and it is, it is simple, but it also takes a lot of it's hard work. Study, yeah, you yeah. Have to buy a, a bunch of baby toys in there, which you never yeah. basically. Yeah, literally, exactly. And that's what happened. That's what ended up happening. Um, <laughs> I ended up not making any profit on the first 1,500, so yeah. I ended up like just about making my money back. I think I made 1,300 bucks. I was all even at a loss. And then I kind of took a step back a bit yeah. and um, I started like, buying softwares and stuff that helped me analyze how much a product was selling per day. I developed like a five point check on each product that I check um, to see if it's gonna sell or not. And since then, every product I've bought has sold, so it works. Um, and then yeah, from there, I just carried on building, 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 building. And how long have you been doing it for now? Two and a half, three years now. Two and a half, three years. And it got to the point that you was able to give your mom money for you guys to go and buy a house. Yeah, yeah. So I, I live by myself now. But, um, yeah, so last year, 2020, no, October 2020, towards the end of October 2020, um, obviously I built enough money and my business was turning over like six figures for the past two years successfully. It just hit seven. Say this. That again, so I don't think <laughs> Say that again. Yeah, it was turning <laughs> over. It was turning over. So in the first year, we turned over six figures. Um, it didn't really hit me. It still hasn't really hit me. Then the second year, we turned over another six figures. And then this year, we just hit seven figures in revenue, March the 13th. Um, and we're, yeah, and we're looking, at, we're probably going to hit double that in the next two to three years as well. What? Seven figures, you're talking a million right now. Yeah, in revenue, in revenue. In revenue. But that's, yeah. that's just, that's just crazy. Yeah, it's mental like, stuff. You, you've astounded me. And the thing is, for someone who just started this only a couple of years ago, what you're kind of demonstrating to the young people out there, even to adults per se, is that anything is possible. All you have to do is kind of study. I always tell people this, anything you ever want to learn, it's on the internet. Exactly. You can become a scientist today, you might have the qualification, but you can find out how to be a scientist via the internet. So, I mean, when we started doing this, did, did anyone believe that it could happen? I mean, your uncle said that you invested at 1500. Did your mom believe that this could happen? I mean, my uncle weren't even taking me serious at the time, and yeah. he just kind of felt a bit bad for me because obviously he just came out of bin, so he knows what the roads are like and yeah. whatnot. And I just got excluded from school, and I think he didn't kind of want me to go down that wrong path. So you can see I was trying to do something po yeah. positive, so he just kind of bust me. But my mom. Ah, uh, my mum. The headache I got from my mum, like, constantly about, oh, you're not doing nothing with your life, you're going down, like, a risky path, mm. all of that stuff. Like, my mum's kind of, she can't, she can't believe before she can see. Yeah. But when she started seeing, that's when she kind of ate her words. Mm. Um, and, yeah, now she's very supportive of me, but back then, she was, um, she weren't really still, so. And what about your brother? You know, you say he's currently in jail right now. I mean, yeah, yeah. When he's hearing all of this, what's the conversation you guys are having? Is he proud? Is he like, you know what, when I come out, so let's, let, let me try and help her? Yeah. Sometimes with, with family, it's, it's, it's not as easy as, yeah, come come and start yeah. doing this as well. It's like, are you yeah. going to be doing the right thing? So yeah. what's the conversation with him? What is he saying? Do you know what it is with my brother? He's still, even though he's 22 in it, but he still kind of got that mentality, that road mentality in it. Mm. He still has. So I told him, like, when you come out, I'm not just going to be flinging money at you. Like, you're going to, like, if you need a job, I can give you a job. Mm. You can come work for me mm. and you can make money that way legally. But obviously, with the trials that he's got, it's going to be very difficult for him to find a job in, like, yeah. a, do you get what I mean? Mm. So, but, you know, he's proud of me as well, though, man. But I just hope he kind of sees that. You can and do it's something very positive. Well. So it's yeah. funny, there's like, as a younger brother, something the ego is there. Oh, go and work for my younger brother. <laughs> now, you know, but that's how it's sort of our pride. Yeah. 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 And uh, dad, what's, what's, what's dad saying? Is he's my, saying I was, my dad passed away like uh, last year, so yeah, he's not really here no more. Me and my, but do you know what it is? It didn't really affect me like that. I can't even lie. Obviously, it was my dad and whatnot, but we weren't really, we was never really that close. Mm. Um, Growing up, he weren't really around. He weren't really the father figure in the house either. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like, yeah. Is that why you felt like you had to sort of do this and step up for your, for your family? Yeah, 100%, man. I had to step up for my marriage because um, obviously with my older brother, like there wasn't a lot of... I had to step up from quite a young age. Like even when I was making a bit of money here and there of football, I would always help out my mum and stuff like yeah. that. Um, yeah, so 
What about your your younger brother when he's seeing this now? Is he excited? How are you keep yeah, yeah, talking yeah. to him and telling yeah. him that? I try to educate him as much as possible. At the end of the day, um, he's still young in it. Yeah. So I don't want to kind of overly excite him because yeah. I feel like he can get he can get complacent if he thinks that when he comes out of school it's just going to be a walk in the park yeah. it? Like I want him to work as hard as me because like for the past two three years I've been so anti-social I've had no social life like working day to night like no sleep nothing I've been grinding for a very very long time um, so I want him to understand that side of it but also I do educate him on finance and stuff like that because they don't teach you that stuff in school in it so i mean after this interview you're gonna have a whole lot of dms boy <laughs> how, how's with the ladies uh do you know what it is yeah i'm not i'm not really your focus right now, you're to... yeah do you know what it is i feel like a lot of people my age are not really on the same wavelength as well so mm -hmm. it's, it makes it a lot more difficult and also like even with my friends a lot of my friends don't even know what i do mm. like i'm very keep myself to myself, I just keep it moving. Like they know I do something, but they don't know how much money I make or that I own businesses. Like, cause I've kind of got two circles of friends. I've got like a business circle and then the mandem in it. And, and see like, I guess that like, with the mandem, is it like I said, they don't know what you're doing, but obviously they're hearing this now. Is it a thing that where there's ever any jealousy or is there more encouragement? And um, also with success comes a lot of hate sometimes. Is it a thing that where you have to sort of watch who you step with, who you hang around with as well? Yeah, do you know what it is? This is probably going to be the first time they're going to hear it, yeah. yeah. Demand a minute. That is probably they're gonna be surprised. Yeah. Um, but nah, I feel like I do have to be careful though. Like it has definitely made me more wary. Like when people say they're afraid of success, mm -hmm. I kind of understand it now because it's not about it's not the success you're afraid of. It's kind of how people will treat you with that yeah. success. Do you get what I mean? You have to kind of move a bit wary. But I've always been that type of person anyway. I feel like growing up on the roads and just growing up in tough areas like. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to have that lone wolf mentality anyway, so yeah, yeah it's not really a thing for me, but yeah, I mean, try. besides the house, what's been one of the, 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 the best purchases? Not even it don't have to be expensive, what's been like one of the best purchases you said, you know what? I'm actually happy I bought this, like it's made me feel happy through my hard work. Do you know what? I haven't actually, I'm in the post, I'm looking at buying a car right now, my first mm -hmm. car, innit? Yeah. I'm not in the, but other than that, I haven't actually treated myself to a certain thing, but one, I made a really good investment, like in crypto and stuff like yeah. that. And like, obviously I invested last year as well, at the start of last year, March last year, I invested in a, obviously a CBD company yeah. that I got 20% of that and it's got a good, got quite a good return in it. So that was probably what I mean, I'm happy to do. Like, how like. did you even decide to, okay, I've got this amount of money, I'm going to invest in this CBD. Obviously we know um, cannabis is being legalized a lot of places in the US yeah. and so on. So was there a thing that where you, you look at that market and thinking, okay, cool, let me... Yeah, do you know what it is? As I said, like I eat through books. Mm. I read so much. Like I read like a book every two weeks. Like, I love reading now. Um, I used to hate it, but I like reading business books now. And obviously the cannabis and CBD industry is a growing industry. Like they're even trying to legalize it in the UK. Yeah. Um, and CBD is like everywhere now. Like in certain restaurants, they're selling CBD cocktails and mm. stuff like that. So for me, I looked at it as a kind of long-term investment. Um, 10 years from now, that business could be Hopefully, it could be like a multi-million pound business, but or even more than that. So that's kind of why I decided to put my money in stuff like that, and obviously crypto as well. Yeah. That's going to be the currency of the future. So mm. um, I mean, everyone keeps telling me crypto. Like the other day, I was in a cab coming over here, and I'm like, you know, you get them cab drivers just want to talk to you. Like, oh, leave me alone, maybe. He's like, oh, you know what? I'm like, what have you been up to then? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm into crypto. Like, I'm like, I keep hearing everything in crypto. He's like, yeah, he invested in Dodge at a good time, Dogecoin, whatever. I'm like, what are these things? I mean, I mean, you read, right? Yeah. So is it a great, because someone told me the other day I should go and invest in Acoin because it's only worth 20p right now because a a Acoin is building all these cities in Africa. It's a good thing to invest in. How do you choose what to invest in? Is that just through reading and understanding? It's reading and listening to the experts. Obviously, I'm not no expert. Yeah. Like, I just kind of, I'm not a day trader or nothing. I just do a bit on the side because when your money's sitting in a bank, it's depreciating, isn't it? Yeah. Like, there's no point in it having, having it sitting there. So, obviously, I like to just invest here and there. But the way I do it is, I'll say one thing, don't follow the crowd because yeah. when you follow the crowd, you'll lose money. Like, you see the hype around Dogecoin and that. Yeah. You have to understand, when you put your money into the stock market, it's always 50-50. It's mm -hmm. a gamble, isn't it? Like, don't be, don't put in any money that you're not prepared to lose. So yeah. that's kind of the way I look at it. I don't put um, like a substantial amount in because that risk of losing it is going to hurt my pocket, do you understand? Yeah. With Dogecoin, I haven't really looked into it because those coins are kind of like, 
quick money grabbing yeah. sch schemes, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Whereas coins like Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other coins that are more long-term investments that are a lot more stable as yeah. well, that over time, your, your profit will gradually increase. Like With Dogecoin and that, it's more like you put your money in, it's like a two-week trade. Yeah. You might see a return and stuff like that, but for the long term, mm -hmm. um, not going to make really any profit. Of it. I mean, why do you think that a lot of young people is this through the lack of reading and understanding? A lot of young people ain't got their head on the shoulders that you have. Because like you said, it took an experience. You think a lot of people need that experience? Because some people do get that experience or something bad, but then instead of just saying, oh, you know what, that's not for me, they go to seek revenge or they're like this, they're just more, more motivated about it. What was it about that experience in particular that said, you know what, actually, nah, I'm not involved? Do you know what it is? Yeah? What you have to understand is obviously my friend. There's a quote, live, live by the sword, die by the sword, innit? Yeah. My friend was involved in that life, mm -hmm. so it's inevitable that something like that would happen, innit? Mm -hmm. Now, when you're on the roads, you have to understand there's always that risk of something like that happening to you. So for me to be, obviously I was angry, but for me to seek revenge, obviously I believe in karma and whatnot. Like, mm -hmm. karma's not going to sleep anytime soon. Yeah. So, like, me doing anything is not really going to... Do you understand? Like, it's not going to make the situation any better. Yeah. Like, I've got people I need to, like, if imagine I go to prison now, my mum's by herself, yeah. my little brother, with my older brother in prison. Do you understand? So, I feel like social media has a big part to play in it, really and really. I think there's a lot of clout and people aren't securing themselves. Like, me, I don't care what anyone thinks in it. Mm. So, whether you think I'm bad, whether you think I'm not bad, whether you think I'm going to do this or that. It don't really matter to me. So yeah. I think once people get out of that mindset, because I feel like a lot of these, a lot of the revenge and a lot of the get backs and all of these, I feel like it's to impress friends more than actually the revenge side of things. Do you yeah. understand? So, yeah, man. I mean, moving to more positivity, you said you're about to go into your first office. Yeah, so it's, I'm kind of 50-50 with it right now, obviously, the way COVID is moving. But... um it's definitely something I'm looking into. I'm looking to like scale the team right now. Yeah. Um, currently got three people working under me now, but I want to make, I want to scale up in it. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you go around in, in regards to, like I said, you might get a hell of a lot of DMs from people saying, oh, give me a job, give me a job. Do you, do you ask for the CVs? Do you, yeah. <laughs> being a in yourself, like how do you study someone's CV and say, okay, you're the right person? Do you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't actually study. I don't actually look at people's feelings and um, interviews. I'm, do you know what? Because I've never really cared about school and stuff like that, innit? I feel like it would be a bit contradictory for me to care if someone has a degree or yeah. certain qualifications, you get what I mean? So for me, it's kind of more of what the person can offer for the role. Yeah. Like, if I just feel like you're right for the role and you're a quick learner and you're not, like, combative and stuff like that, just you've got good traits and I feel like you can do a good job, then I'll hire you, innit? Like, I don't care if you don't have a degree or s particular experience, like... Mm. I don't mind helping people out mm. as long as you're willing to work hard and put in the work. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't mind. Have you thought about doing sort of workshops on, on, on what you do? Yeah. Um, I actually I started a mentorship program last month where I was teaching people over Zoom yeah. how to set up their own business on Amazon. Um, I kind of slowed down on it a bit because I didn't really have the time. Mm. But I'm thinking of setting up a course soon yeah. like I can sell online um, for people to buy. Cause I feel like Amazon FBA is starting to become a bit more popular now. Yeah. But I feel like when I started, if I could have someone like me to just teach, I would have really appreciated it. Like, I mean, this is something I guess you can even pitch to schools in terms of the curriculum, not the curriculum, but it's like, can we come and do workshops at schools? It's going to cost this amount of money. And I think it's a different sort of trade that young people don't know about, really. And being it, so I think that definitely scope, scope in, 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 in that, to be mm. fair. So that's something that you're going to be looking for. Yeah, 100%, man. Now, like, I like helping people, innit? Like, I want to help people from that come from a um, similar environment from me, especially black, young black kids as well. I feel like it's a lot of... It's tough, man, innit? It's tough. It's very tough. I feel like in school especially, like, I used to, I used to hate school. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm definitely all about helping people, but it's all about just the timing of it. Do you know what I mean? So what do you kind of do? I mean, you're still young, you're 18. You so you're not really got a social life, but I, what do you do for fun? Because you have to have fun still. Yeah, man, I still have fun. I still got my friends and that. Um, I still play football every now and again. Yeah. Football's still kind of my escape. Like, mm -hmm. I play it every now and again just to kind of release a bit. But yeah, like, I'm more 90% work, 10% yeah. play, you know, mm -hmm. like, I'm constantly working. Like, I've got so much goals and stuff like that that I need to reach. Mm -hmm. like, there's no two ways about it. So, what's, what's the ultimate goal? <laughs> the, ultimate goal? <laughs> the ultimate goal for me is to end up in the Forbes list. Gee, like that. Yeah. 
yeah, I want to be on the floor of this. I want to be like a well-renowned businessman, like mm. Elon Musk and all them, man. So, bro, look, I'm going to say that when, when you make it, because I, I have no doubt you're going to get just, yeah, just remember that little percentage to big ego for the contribution for this interview. But no, but honestly, like, you're doing amazing stuff. And like, what is the sort of next year looking for? Because like, I guess you was under lockdown and now we're sort of getting out of lockdown. What are you, what are you, what are you doing in, in the next year? Yeah, so the, within the next year, COVID is kind of being a bit annoying now. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really affecting me before, but I'm trying to get into real estate and stuff. Because yeah. I feel like that's where the money is at. Um, there's an app I'm looking into kind of making or producing as well with some other people that it looks really good as well. Mm. So there's some bright stuff for the future, man. Um, but mainly real estate. I think real estate is the main thing I need to get into. Yeah. Um, that's where the money's at, isn't it? I mean, I think there should definitely be a, like a small documentary made about you and what you're doing, to be fair, because like, it's, 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 it's amazing. And I don't think enough young people out there get a chance to actually speak. So as soon as I heard what you were doing, I was like, you know what? My interviews are sort of of, of a particular nature, but let me actually get someone here that's young. We hear these young people saying we've got no options, but there are plenty of options for them. So just about there's yeah, there's no like I say all the time, there's no excuse not to be making money legally. Yeah. Especially in my generation, innit? Mm. Because you've got YouTube. Like when you guys was growing up, there was no YouTube to mm. go research. If you want to learn how to trade and you really want to learn how to trade, you just go watch a YouTube video, you go read a book. But for me, books are the main one. Yeah. See, I understand people, not all people are readers, but mm. there's audible books, there's so much stuff that like, there's no there can't be any excuse to trap. Yeah. There's no excuse like and the thing is, that's what I, I mean, I, I used to like reading a lot, especially when I was in jail. Since I've come out, I don't read as much. And you just made a point there. I've been saying, I need to read again, but that's not just the words. But you're right, there's audible books where you can actually, because everyone, this is a podcast right now, so you can actually put a book. I mean, give me three books now that you think that people should be going to sort of, young people, old people, whoever it is, should you go and read or listen to? See, the main one for me, the first book I read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. Um, that book kind of changed my life, like it turned me into like, it really changed my mindset. Um, I say The Millionaire Fast Lane, that's another good book. Can we repeat it on The Millionaire? The Millionaire Fast Lane. Okay. And the third one is called The Secret. It's kind of about like manifesting and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so those are the three books I'll probably I recommend to start. The two, the two original, the two, the Rich one, one three, yeah. the number two, I've not heard of, so I'll absolutely definitely look into that. Yeah. So, what would you sort of compare the upbringing that you've had in sort of growing in, in how you have to, how you're living now? Like, what, what is the main contrast? Do you know what? It's just the freedom to do what you want to do. Like, I can't, no one's telling me what time to wake up. No one's telling me what time to go to sleep. Like, I kind of do what I want to do during the day. And for me, that's the main thing. Like, my life hasn't really drastically changed. Like, mm. I'm not one of them guys that's gonna go Selfridges and spend like thousands of pounds. Like, I've never been that guy, like I'm still in. Do you know what it is, yeah? You say, do you know what it is? It's ironic me saying that, but I'm not I'm not that guy. Like it's I don't, a, a little piece here and there is okay, but you know them people like, again, I have like a 10X rule. Like if you can't afford the product 10 times, you don't buy it, you understand? So. You say 10 times, some people say like, two times, you're saying you have to afford it 10, 10 times. times. Straight away, like if, if you're buying a kind of the goose jacket, you have eight thousand pounds in the bank. You don't buy it. It don't make any sense. Like you've got people that are earning thirty k a year, financing the sixty k car. Mm. It don't make sense. You get. You have to do the maths. Like it don't add up. Um, so yeah, I've all, I'm still wearing the same tracksuits I was wearing back then. I'm still the same guy. Maybe a bit more luxury here and there. Mm. Um, but yeah, man. Yeah. I'm, holidays. Where, where you planning to go once the pandemic? Yeah, I, I've got a bag of places I want to go. I want to go to Mexico. Um, I want to go to back to the bite as well. Cause I went there two years ago. Yeah. Um, Greece as well. There's a lot of countries still. It's just with the whole vaccine and stuff like that. You have to be careful. So. I mean, back 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 to football again as well. So you might as well like look for yourself into buying a small club. <laughs> yeah, when I get enough money, when I get enough yeah, money, yeah, why into not? It, look into it. Like a national league side or something. Yeah, why not? But hopefully, Hatton will be um, <laughs> there in those periods. We know. But honestly, AJ, it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, like. It's probably one of the shortest interviews I've done. However, I think you've given more information in this interview than I had in most interviews. Because I think as a young person, what you're doing, I want to tell you from someone's older, 
you're making me proud and you're actually inspiring me. I and appreciate it. Raw. I need to tell the team, we need to work harder. We need to work harder. We need to catch yeah. up to this young man. But what he's doing there is it's motivating and it's motivational. And I want young people to watch this, older people to watch it and say, look, this is a young man that's not just, he's not, he's not, being, he's not born with a silver spoon. He's come from a place of hardship where his father wasn't really around, dad's gone to prison, uncle's gone to prison, and we all like to make excuses about a single parent household. But he's taken that aspect, was touching a little bit of the road stuff, but he said he made a decision very early for him to change his life around. And you should be proud of yourself. I mean, what, what, do, you, do you look back and think to yourself, sit back up? Because I was like that when I, was, when I got out of prison, I started the football, and I'm like, wow, oh, this is actually me doing this football, it's crazy. Do you sit back and think, I can't believe this is happening? Yeah, so it's quite surreal still. Like sometimes I feel like I'm dreaming and whatnot, but again, the heart, the work I put in, mm. like when people say you get lucky, it's, it's not luck because like I was not doing normal stuff I was meant to be doing at seventeen. Like I weren't going to all these parties. I weren't going out with my friends. Like when my friends would ask me to come out, I'd be like, no, I'm doing something. I'm busy. Like I would, not, I was not doing anything. I never had no social. Like like I'm even new to this social media, Instagram, mm. and all of this I stuff. Say your social media is pretty blank at the moment. Yeah, yeah, like you put yeah, there, really. yeah. Do you know I've never needed to because again my business don't really interact with customers. Yeah. It's more just. Amazon, mm. I'm kind of the middleman, if that makes sense. So, but to be fair, I mean, so, uh, social media is a bit of a gift and a curse, right? But you can put yourself out there, you get the trolls, you get the hate, but at the same time, you can also inspire people. You also can be targeted sometimes. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, who this guy I think he is? But for me personally, I think your story is one to be told and share it as much as possible. And let people know that this is actually possible because like, yeah. our young people are being killed in these streets for over petty stuff, over trying to sell petty drugs, over territory. But you said, you know what, look, let me be the way, let me show you something different. And I think I'm going to try and work as hard as I can to put you in different platforms and tell people, look, come and interview this young man, but like what he's doing right there, he's showing the way. No, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Right, man. man. I appreciate it. And guys, that was AJ, and that's Big Evil Media.